Hi, my name is Rick. I'm also known as Rick's Two Cents. If you're new to my channel, thank you for coming by and checking out my videos. If you're not new to my channel, thank you for coming back for another video. Today's actual video is gonna become a series of videos and it's, it's actually going to be um, products that you can market, that you can make money selling with uh, lasers, whether it be a dial laser, whether it be a CO2 laser, whether it be a fire, fiber laser. This series of videos is gonna cover all different things. And it's gonna go from smalls to largest, so you can kind of mix it up, seasonal items, things that could be market, that are extremely easily marketable um, and, and not necessarily uh, to a particular area of the country this is something that's going to be across the board you know so uh for instance this first video itself is actually going to be on halloween so whether you have a dial laser whether you have a co2 laser fiber laser you know these are some things that you can make obviously right whether it be a 5 watt a 25 watt a 35 watt a 40 watt this is something that you can do so this is the, the type of videos I'm, on, I'm going to be making so if you find that content valuable um if you're not already a subscriber do me a favor and go ahead and hit the subscribe button go ahead and hit that like button and don't forget the notification button so you get updated when i post new videos so <laughs> My mind has been going crazy and kind of being creative and thinking, um, what am I going to make? So boom, 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 boom. I'm, <laughs> what am I going to make? What am I going to make? This is what I came up with. I want to make something that wouldn't be, um, for instance, you know, I mill my own wood. So that'd be an unfair advantage to say, hey, look what I made because you wouldn't be able to do it. So I'm going to, I'm going to take store bought box store items, for instance, uh, picket fences. From Home Depot uh, and make it so that for two dollars and nineteen cents, this material cost you could buy it as well. It's not something to you know unique to me in the Chicagoland area, or it's not something that I'm milling myself. You don't have the ability to because you don't have you know that type of uh, equipment. So, two dollars nineteen cent board turned into thirty five dollars. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get doing it. Um, let me go ahead and grab some building material. Let's get some ideas, and you know, <laughs> as you start seeing all these little faces fly around in the sky above and around me, this is what my mind has been going through and trying to think: what's the best? What's going to do this? Uh, I'm a little late in this in the season, so to speak. I've been really busy on making some Day of the Dead items. Um, so, without a doubt, you know, this is something I'm going to get a head start on next year. Uh, but I'm sure I won't have any left. You know, these things will sell out quick. So uh, let's do it. Here we go. All right, like I said, these are just standard uh, picket fences from Home Depot. Nothing fancy to them. They're a little rough. All right, so there's no real right and wrong way to do this other than start it on fire. But uh, I did start off with yellow gas and it seemed to be a little too hot. So I'm going back with this blue and you just kind of go slow and you know get the look that you like so i already started let's just let's just finish it out you can tell it's definitely wet like there it is that's the look I didn't catch it on fire. Didn't burn down the house. <laughs> I think it looks really cool, to be honest with you. I wouldn't mind trying this again on another, uh, obviously a better quality board and uh, just clearing over this. This looks pretty nice. I like this look. All right, uh, and obviously the stain is a transparent. So uh, whatever color I put on top of this, it's gonna just darken that. So I'm really excited to see how that's gonna look. So uh, I'm gonna bring this inside and get it stained up. Time to put some paper out so that the stain doesn't actually uh, get on my table. Bought this paper at uh, Sam's Club. I'll put a link in the description below if you're interested in purchasing it. Pretty cheap. Bidding for one to double layer there. That'll be enough. I think it'll be enough. And I'm raising it off the ground because if it sits on the ground, when uh, the stain drips over, uh, it'll drip under here on the other side and it just makes a mess. So, so there we go. And then 
just hosting these up on spray paint can spray paint lids nothing fancy sometimes i just use a lot a lot of from two by fours so sweet. and if you didn't see that earlier in the video this is bare premium poly water-based stain and i had them uh stain it in orange They actually had to take some of the stain out to be able to add enough yellow to make it as orange as I wanted it. So, let's see how this comes out. I wanted it bright orange, but they said they couldn't do it. This is about as orange as they could get. This is not paint, this is stain, so. It almost looks like a pastel orange. Take a peek so you can see that black, how it's coming through. That effect turned out really awesome. Really happy the way that looks. So I'm not going to paint the last one orange. I'm going to paint the last one green. But what do you think of that and how that came out? That looks awesome. Hold the camera, let's take a peek at that green. So again, this is stain, not paint, so I'm curious how that's gonna look going through here. There you go, let's get it set up. All right, the green looks pretty cool too. So, lid is dry. I'm gonna let it dry overnight before I cut it up. Anytime I try to rush things drying, it always screws up. So better just to be patient. So um, to be continued. <laughs> Magic of YouTube, it'll seem like it's all done at once. The reality is I will cut these apart in sections. And then once I can cut apart in sections, throw it on the laser and start engraving the faces. So uh, I'm excited. Here we go. Back. I'm back. So I'm super happy. I did. I'm super happy with the results. I couldn't be happier. It looks phenomenal. Uh, I'm just mad at myself that I didn't do this a month ago and had a hundred of these because I know they would sell. So definitely, definitely, definitely next year I'm gonna be on it for sure. And I'm sure anything that I make, I know it's gonna sell. I posted a picture of this on social media and they're already just wanted to buy it and they don't even know what the heck it is. So I was on Etsy, I was on Google, looking online, just kind of seeing like what, you know, as examples of what other sizes are people making these. And it looks like typically they're about, um, they're about six inches tall. So I'm gonna make it around that. Um, so my chop saw is currently in my garage because I had I was working on a project with some really big wood and I didn't want to drag it down to the wood shop in, the, in my basement. So I'm gonna take these out and cut them to size um, in the garage and then I'll bring them back and we'll start assembling these. I think you'll like them. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, so if you have a laser, this is something you can easily do. Um, you know, you don't have to be extremely skilled. You know, so these are smalls that are gonna make money. And not only smalls are gonna make money, it's gonna bring customers because they bought something off you, you know, and this is the first time you made a business with them, then they're gonna come back for something bigger. They're gonna come back, you know, you're gonna earn repeat customers. That's what I like. Every single, anyone that I've ever sold anything to, whether it be a shirt or anything I made out of wood, they're always repeat customers. Not only are they repeat customer, they're my number one form of advertisement. You know, I do such a kick-ass job, 
they tell 15 people, you know, they bring me 15 customers, and those 15 customers bring me two, three customers, and so on, and so on, and so on. So word of mouth is definitely your best form of advertising. So let's get this cut up. Let's get this going. I'm excited. Here we go. Four uh, oranges and greens, the inside painted white. I've used uh, Rust Oleum spray paint. I'll show you a quick can that I use just the four times uh, apply uh, spray paint. And um, now I'm going to actually paint the last board white. Um, um, this one, it doesn't really matter if it's the, you know, the outside or inside painted first uh, because it's white. So if I get a little overspray for some reason, you're not going to notice the difference. Um, but like I said, going forward in this project, I always do the inside first and then the outside. Um, but here we go. Let's get some paper laid out. Um, let's get this going. And let it dry overnight and I'm excited for tomorrow. Once the white is completely dry, uh, then I'm going to hit it with some yellow. We'll start this for as well. Here we go. All right, let's go and get this mixed up. Twenty four hours later, man, it looks awesome. I was concerned at first because it looked like it was a paint and it didn't look like a stain and to me it was too uh covering. It wasn't as revealing as the wood grain and the burning. So really sucked it in good. Um that's perfect. That's exactly the effect that I wanted. So I'm happy. Um all the other boards outside are done on both sides, so uh I just have to paint this other side white um, outside and let it dry in the garage. But meanwhile, I'll start cutting up uh, the other boards and get them sized to start putting this together. I'm like excited, it's coming out great. So it's getting on the wire. I gotta, I wanna finish these all before this weekend. So within the next two days, get them wrapped up and finished. Uh, get them all sold this weekend because it's only two weeks before Halloween. <laughs> and I'm like waiting for the last minute like but like I said I've been was busy on other things and better late than never uh, at worst case scenario uh, I figured out the process and 100% I'm gonna hit this like two months early on, on um, before Halloween next year and just really go to town and building these I think these are phenomenal so uh, let's come back um, with the other piece cut up and be able to see me start assembling these uh, actually uh, I'm gonna assemble I'm gonna start assembling them except for the fronts so that uh, I can be doing things as I'm lasering on the front side I'm not just standing there doing nothing at least I can be assembling the sides and the back and etc etc lots of laser in the fronts but uh I don't anticipate the lasering to take a whole lot of time uh, it's not a drastic amount of uh detail and I'm not engraving I'm actually just going to be cutting it out so no use for a CNC no use for a jigsaw none of that the laser let laser do all the work here we go all right I got them all chopped up Let's see the yellows on this side the oranges on this side and then the greens uh, this top is just for the inside, yellow on this side. So in the yellows on the inside, because it should reflect the light better, or appear to look red white. So, and to kind of conserve some paint, I hit it with white first, and then covered it with yellow. So uh, put it on the table saw now, chop those up. I still got that one right there, the white, that I'm going to do the same exact thing. I gotta paint it white on the outside first, let it dry, and then hit it with some yellow. So I'm going to get that masked off and tape that first, so that when I paint that, that while that's drying, I'm working on this kind of dual action, two things going on at once. So uh, I'll go ahead and get that done, and then get set up on this table and start cutting these down to the width they actually need to be. <clears throat> Um, I'll get one cut down so then I can set up on the laser and again I always like to be multitasking so while that's where burning on the laser I'm cutting up the rest you know so as long as I'm one front ahead you know I'm good to go so uh, 
that's just the way I like to work. I just I don't like to be sitting my hands sitting on my hands so to speak or just watching the laser work and I'd rather be doing something at the same as that time multitasking. So let's get started. All right, I got them all laid out. They've been drying overnight, so I know that they won't be tacky or gum up. Uh, when I do cut these aside, I will have to uh, touch up one side, so to speak, but that shouldn't be a huge ordeal. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting these on the table saw, get them cut to size. Again, since everyone's been asking me repeatedly, you can always pause or, or rewind or you know watch these videos uh, and take notes on anything that I say. Um, but I will be setting up an Etsy store. So if you're more of a uh, plans in hand type of person, you will be able to, I will have, uh, I will be posting uh, all the plans for this, uh, as well as any of the designs that I use uh, to be able to downloadable from the Etsy store. They will not be expensive. They'll just be a uh, fairly, uh, extremely affordable, but just, you know, a couple extra pennies in my pocket to help this channel going and uh, to support this type of content being created. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start cutting some of these size um, I'm a multitasker so I will be cutting the fronts that's what I'm focusing on uh, so that I can start lasering uh, and cutting these out in the background uh, and then while it's laser engraving then I can be cutting other pieces so I'm not just standing there looking at the laser I can kind of babysit jump between the laser as I'm making the rest of these cuts so let's go ahead and uh, start getting these cut out So the base that the uh, that these are going to be sitting on are actually five and a half by five and a half. So the front and the back are going to be six inches tall by four and a, four and a half inches wide. So that there's a little bit of gap. Um, there'll be you know half inch gap on each side when it's sitting in there, kind of like that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these to four and a half inches wide. They're already six inches long or, or tall. So I cut those chop saw so I'll go ahead and rip those down uh, and then like I said go ahead and um, I took my designs I've already started converting them or importing them into Lightburn um, so that uh, you know I can cut those I did that offline too for sake of the uh, time of this video uh, some of the stuff you will see me doing time lapse because I know before I was just editing that out and you know you see it then you saw it done and people were saying they kind of wanted to see that even if it was spun you know super fast so uh, I've been doing that due to people's requests but uh, let's go ahead and get these cut up. I just want to show something as I'm creating these. What I'm doing is I'm actually using a piece of cardboard, make marking the center line, I'm using my grid to line up the work, sticking in here. That way, let me show you the throwaway piece. I can get it lined up because the faces are not always like even. You know, they could be a little crooked or this or that, and it's intentional for the look. So I'd rather throw away a few pieces of cardboard, get my my uh, artwork lined up and remove my wood. So just a quick tip uh, that could help you get everything lined up. Then make your little notes on how they're going to be and uh, be good to go. So you can keep duplicating the same exact thing without having to go through the second or third time. All right, I'm satisfied with my with my tests here. You can see I did it a couple times. I finally got to where I wanted dialed in. You know, I don't even know which one was the final. There we go. Here's the final. But at any rate, like I said, better to waste a few pieces of cardboard than to ruin your wood. So uh, let's get it put in there and let's get it let's get it engraving. Alright, I put a center line on that piece of wood. I got my center line on my block, which means that's the end, and on dead center. So um, you know technically it should be good. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and do a light inscribe. Just to make sure, um, and then everything's 
good, then I'll go ahead and uh, set the final cut and to actually cut all the way through. So let's go ahead and uh, get that set up here. I'm going to turn the set off, I'm turn the glare. Okay. And let's go ahead and hit home. Back home, as you can see. Alright, I always just like to hit home again. Just some OCD, I guess. Alright, and right now, uh, let's see the layer cut. I'm at 3,000 feet, 14% power. This is on a 35 watt laser, so let's go ahead and hit start. This should just leave basically a faint line. I can tell right away just by the face. That looks solid. One thing though I do want to keep in mind is since I'm cutting all the way through, um, I don't want to cut all the way through directly on my board, so I am going to install my grid. You have to reline this up, but I'm, uh, I'm happy the way that looks. I didn't think about the uh, cutting all the way through though. I don't want to start a fire on this board. So let me get that set up. Make sure it's gonna come loose. But if it doesn't, for some reason, you can you never move it. And you can do another pass. But I think that's always cool to see that. Right, right, so look how clean that is. So somebody made a comment on a short that there was burn marks on the uh, front face, and that that's why CNC is better. And <laughs> I normally paint the sides edges in and something like that black. Uh, so what I did is I actually turned the uh, air assist off over here. So that it made it a little blacker. So I had the air assist on full. And look, no mask can take, no nothing. There's no black on the front. Nice clean cut, no crazy burns. So I was trying to create an effect for the Halloween effect and I intentionally turned the air assist off. But uh, I left the air assist on full blast just so I can show the difference. And obviously the yeah, inside is yellow. We'll go over why I did that in a moment. And see them all assembled. So. Two left to make. The other ones are actually outside drying in the um, in the garage. I did a set of three sets of uh, three coats of clear. So um, yeah, I'm super happy the way this project is coming out. I can't say it again that uh, my only disappointment is that um, I didn't start this sooner. I want to show something too. The light burn. The light burn is sometimes difficult to use. Uh, let me turn the splash off. Hold on, sorry. It's difficult to use uh, on a small screen. I have a cheap HP laptop, right? So, a $350 point chain HP laptop. That's all I need. I don't need anything fancy. But the only problem that sucks is that the monitor is small. And because of these menus and things on Lightburn, um, sometimes it's just a real pain to use Lightburn with such a small screen. So, I would suggest if you are using a cheap old laptop like I am, 
that's fine, right? You don't need some, uh, you know, I have over there, you know, MacBook Pro, more expensive. But um, you can have this little $300 cheap laptop dedicated to your laser or your CNC. But I would suggest you install a second monitor. So that way you can look at your artwork on your actual, that's what I did. I created a folder, Jack-O-Lantern Top Picks, you know, and I pulled out of all my art, just the ones I want to make. And I'm start doing my bashing. And then my light burns open on top, and I don't, and I don't have to, because uh, you can't do a preview if it's saved at a light burn file. But since I have the open on the PNG, fo I have a PNG folder, and then I converted all these to light burn folders. So I have the PNG folder open. They're obviously all named the same exact thing. And then I can just say, okay, that's the one I want to open. So I think that makes things a lot faster, having a dual monitor, and it makes light burn a lot easier to use. So just a quick tip, uh, you know. And if you'd like to see more light burn. Uh, tips, quick some tips. Uh, I will start doing some life burn videos. Uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments below if that's something you guys would like to see. So, at any point, let's uh, get back to what we're doing here. Um, they're coming along really great. I'm at the point where we're just about to finish up these last two, uh, and then start throwing some lights in there. And we have three different options. The mo the main point that I'm saying is, anytime you make anything, you always want to have uh, upsell options, right? And that way it's also within everyone's budget. You know, someone can't maybe spend $65 on something for the kid, but maybe a lower end they can't, so upsell. And then sometimes you get a low ball, little sale, and then they come back and they, they spend some real good money with you on something like that, you know, but um, just don't think someone buy a $35 item, they will come back later and buy a $250 item. So repeat customers, and if they like your work, you do quality work, you know, you have craftsmanship, they'll come back every season, you know, to, to keep adding to the collection people are geeking in the holidays they generally add to a collection that grows and grows and grows so you be the person that supplies them so they grow and grow and grow you know and then you could just contact them back and say hey i got some new things what do you think of this or what do you think of that you know and keep the sales coming so uh let's go i'm trying to to be honest with you keep this video to a minimum as far as length uh, but i just a lot of things i wanted to cover in this so just get ready for a whole ton of new videos and a ton of different things i'm going to come out with and uh, artwork tips and man i'm just excited so here we go all right all right all right i don't know if they say you saved the best for last but this is definitely a cool one so let's see what it looks like did you guess what it is Ooh it looks pretty sweet all right Put this last one, last two together, and then uh, be able to show everybody what the lights look on. So I drag this video out. It's so crazy. It's hard. It's hard to please everybody. Some people they want to see every intimate detail, and, and they, they don't like it when I skip. They want to see real time, and then you lose people. So if there's parts you don't want to see and parts you do want to see in the in the description below, that's the purpose of the timeline. You can click it, and it'll bring you to that portion. So um, I'm trying to please everybody and just kind of stick in the middle. <laughs> all right so we have uh different options as far as uh the lighting we have a standard can light and then we have a some twinkle lights that will be on the remotes so let me go ahead and get those set up so that you can see the difference and then i did buy both of the lights off amazon so i'll have a link in the description below so that if you want to purchase them you can go ahead and do that i am an amazon affiliate just being honest so uh they won't cost you any more but it'll give the channel a small kickback so i appreciate that um but let's go ahead and grab these lights and get them hooked up and uh tell me what you think which one you like better so here are the standard little t lights so i'll get those put in there and then we'll turn that on you see how those will look and then we'll try the others all right so we got the uh let's stop we got we got the small little lantern uh t lamps t lights in them so let's take a peek so we do have a flickering effect yeah. tomorrow can you take a video of my tongue <laughs> a video of your tongue you silly boy all right let's turn the lights off and see how they look um i had this flashlight hitting on those uh glow in the dark because yeah. they're glowing like crazy i ju just literally dry so i think with some more or one second, i think with some more um 
sunlight or a light on it, it's gonna definitely get a, a decent charge. It is super bright in person, but it was not showing up on the camera. So uh, let's yeah. turn these lights off and let's see what they look like. Yes. Oops. Very cool. Now I that is going now. Yes, sir. Turn this on. Here we go. That's better. Look at that. You can kind of see the glow now. Dad, I want These are the glow in the dark it. you're seeing. Dad, I want to hold it. Frankenstein. Oh, there's Frankenstein. Oh, no, no, that was zombie. <laughs> Very cool. I think they turned out awesome. That's a zombie. The zombie. Oh, that's a zombie. Yeah, the skeleton. My favorite. All right, turn the lights back on. <laughs> So, all right, so this is a build that my son and I did together. Uh, we had a great time building this. Um, he twisted all the tops on. Um, sorry if I made this video a little long. I know there's gonna be a ton of questions people are still gonna have. So if you have any questions, concerns, comments, leave them in the description below, uh, in the comments below, I'm sorry. Um, I'm just super excited. So uh, some of the things just kind of uh, lessons learned, so to speak, is, um, do the tops before you do the bottoms. It's gonna help you line it up. Um, if <laughs> Everyone's gonna have a different method to the madness, but if there's some tips you need putting these together, uh, I would just say repetition makes it faster. Do them in batches. Um, I wouldn't cut one, I'd cut them all, and then just lay them all out and get them all ready. Um, this color is a hard, hard color to find. It's actually a color that Home Depot, thank you Home Depot. Uh, made for me. Uh, they actually had to take some paint out because the the amount of yellow that they had to um, put into the can, um, they could it was it was too much yellow for a quart, so they had to dump some out. So it came out really awesome. I'm really happy with everything is. Uh, you know that burn effect really you know made a, a pop in it. I, I like this green and yellow because these are the monster ones. Uh, <laughs> the glow and the darks are awesome. I'm just disappointed it doesn't look as cool uh, on camera as it does um, to your eyes. To our eyes, it looks super bright. This barely, uh, barely, barely, barely dried. So I'm hoping I put a flash on. I'm gonna put a big bright light above it that'll give it some really nice charge, and then maybe I can get a. Um, a uh Dad, some footage those? of it actually going one second what one second that? so yeah. please do me a favor uh, it really helps the channel if you're not already a subscriber to hit the subscribe button uh, don't forget to click on the bell for notifications so yeah. you get notified when i upload new videos and look for plenty plenty more uh videos like this kind of diy things that you can do uh you can create uh to build a scalable business to don't make a side hustle forget. or make your side hustle your primary income thanks again god don't bless thanks for watching to come to our house. <laughs> thanks for watching and um come back for plenty more videos say bye ricky bye